In this video, I'm going to show you how to get rid of big toe pain for good. Stay tuned. Hey everyone, Dr. Rowe coming to you from Spine Care in St. Joseph, Michigan. In this video, I'm going to go over a very easy to follow three part guide that has some great stretching exercises. Exercises that may give quick big toe pain relief even in as little as 30 seconds, but hopefully we'll get rid of it for good. We're going to focus on stretching and then going into mobilization or a self-release of the big toe and then finally strengthening everything in and around it. When you put all of this together, you will get the best results. So go through all of the exercises and take what works best for you. All of these exercises are very easy, very simple, and can be done in the comfort of your own home. So let's get started and fix that big toe pain right now. In the first part, we're going to focus on getting quick big toe pain relief with some great stretching exercises. This first one is my go-to. I call it the all-in-one big toe opener. It's really easy to do. I just need something like an ordinary tennis ball. You can also use a lacrosse ball, a racquetball if you don't have any of those. Just roll up a couple socks into a very tight ball, place it underneath the big toe. The goal is with this right here is to support the two joints of the big toe. So the first one right here, and then the second one right here. I'm gonna just place them right over the tennis ball just like this. The first movement, we're going to try to take the big toe upwards into dorsiflexion. So once we are in position, I'm gonna take the ball of my foot right here in my heel and then drive them downwards towards the floor. When you do this, that toe is going to come upwards and you'll feel a very deep stretch even more so right here into that second joint. Focus on going into a very deep but comfortable stretch and then holding that one for about 15 to 20 seconds. When you need a breather, just come back up like this by raising the ball of the foot. You want to repeat this for about three to five repetitions. And with each repetition, try to drive down even further to get more of a stretch into that big toe. The second one, we're going to focus on trying to curl the toe downwards into the ball. So let's get into position. The goal with this one, or I should say the trick is to get it to the point where you're cut pretty much from the ball of the foot into the second joint right here, the first one, and then the tip of the big toe is going to be pointing straight downwards towards the floor. Once we're in position, I'm just going to press downwards into the ball as much as I can while cupping it around it with my toes. You'll feel a very good stretch with this one. Usually when I do it, I almost feel like a pulling motion into that second um, joint right here going all the way down to the tip of my toe. Once we get a very deep stretch, let's hold this one right here for about 15 to 20 seconds. From there, you can just relax and then take a breather. Do this one three to five times, and with each repetition, try to squeeze into the ball a little bit more. Always focus on getting that better stretch. The third part, we're going to focus on a toe spreader. This one is especially good for anybody that has a bunion formation on the outside of the toe or an inward tilt of this big toe. So I'm going to cup my toes right here, even more so the big toe and the toe next to it around the ball, and then I'm going to focus on trying to spread them out as much as I can. Once we get that in or initial deep stretch right here into that big toe, I'm gonna to press down into the ball just a little bit by curling my toes inwards. When we do this, it's going to open up that gap right there a little bit more and bring this uh, big toe a little bit further out. We want to hold this one right here for about 15 to 20 seconds. From there, you can relax, take a breather, and then just simply try to repeat this three to five times. You can experiment with dynamic motions also to get a better stretch. So let's press down in there, but this time around, I'm going to focus on taking the arch of the foot and pressing it down, taking my foot into pronation. You'll notice that this really offers a deeper stretch into the foot even more so into the arch. Give that one a try for about 15 to 20 seconds. You can also go into supination, so taking the foot outwards while doing this and see if that one helps you a little bit more. But go through all of these motions. If you notice that one just hits it a little bit differently at that point, put some more repetitions in there. Always target the movements that you feel need it the most. And I hope that this gives very quick pain relief into that big toe. This next big toe stretch is a little bit more advanced, but it's going to help us target different areas of the foot and also the calf muscles, which might be causing big toe pain. I'm going to go next to a door or a wall, go right up towards the edge. We're going to place the tennis ball right at the ball of the foot. I'm going to press my big toe into the edge of that door frame, and then my other toes are going to go off to the side. We just want to focus on pressing downwards with the ball of our foot 
into that tennis ball. What this will do is cause the big toe to come back towards us into dorsiflexion. You'll feel a very deep stretch pretty much throughout the whole toe all the way down to the uh, base, I should say the ball of the foot. So really focus on feeling that to begin with. How we're going to incorporate a little bit more muscles into this is then bending our knee and then kind of lunging forward with our body weight. The more that we lunge forward, the more pressure is going to be placed over the tennis ball, kind of giving us a nice self massage, but it's also going to intensify that stretch into the big toe. So really focus on trying to go as far forward as you can. Once we hit a very deep, comfortable stretch, let's hold this one right here for about 15 to 20 seconds. From there, you can relax, take a breather, and then try to repeat this three to five times. With each repetition, just go into it a little bit more. Try to get that nice self-massage and also stretch out that big toe. From there, I like to experiment with different areas of the bottom of the foot. A lot of people will have big toe pain and also arch pain and things like plantar fasciitis. So this is how we can target that. Let's position the ball a little bit uh, lower right over the arch of the foot. And then I'm just going to press into it with my foot right here downwards and then lunge forward. This right here feels really, really good. I mean, it's really targeting the bottom of the foot. And I just hold this one for 15 to 20 seconds, relax, throw in a couple reps. And then I just explore over a different area and repeat. But pretty much go over the whole bottom of the foot. Travel through the whole arch. If you do notice that one certain spot just hits it a little bit better, at that point stop over it, throw some more repetitions in. It's just a really good way to not only get a very good big toe stretch, but you can target bottom of the foot pain, plantar fasciitis pain, and get a very good calf stretch at the same time. In this part, we're going to focus on a self-mobilization or self-release into the big toe and also into the first metatarsal, the long bone of the foot. We're going to go over three different spots, and if any of these spots are locked up, you might get a satisfying self-pop, crack, or release into them. So let's start with the first knuckle of the toe. You have two of them, one right here and then one right through here. Let's isolate that first knuckle and get our contact point. So I'm just gonna to start to pinch into that first knuckle right there and then just passively move it up and down. What you'll feel is the joint move. What we want to do is go right towards the bottom of that joint. So once you feel it open up, let's go just a little bit below that. What I'm gonna do is take my hand and I'm going to bend my fingers like this and keep my thumb straight. This movement, I'm going to do kind of like a leverage movement like this, almost like taking the cap off of a bottle. Let me show it on my thumb right here to demonstrate it before we do it on our toe. So imagine this right here is that first knuckle of the toe. My fingers right here are going to go right at the bottom and I'm going to press up into it and then take my thumb right here and then go right over the top of the toe. The movement is very easy. What we're trying to do is pull up with our fingers and then pull down with our thumb. What this will do is traction open that joint and really open it up and you might get a sudden pop or release with it. So let's go back to our contact point right here. Let's find it. We're gonna put our fingers right underneath it and I'm just gonna kind of press down on my toe like this to make sure I'm in a good spot. I'm gonna press into it, and then I'm going to take my thumb right here, press down into my big toe, and then that movement lifting up by pulling downwards with my thumb. This causes that opening traction, and again, if this joint right here is locked up, it probably will give you a nice pop or crack. What you want to do from there, if it doesn't release, is don't try to force it, just get a very good stretch for about five to 10 seconds. From there, you can relax and then do this up to five times, just really focusing on trying to open it up just a little bit more with that good stretch. What we're gonna do next is focus on the second knuckle right here. So let's do the same thing. Let's press into there and find our contact point. We want to go just a little bit below that. This movement is also very, very similar towards what we just did. I'm just gonna take my hand right here and I'm just going to stabilize right below that um, second knuckle of the big toe. Doesn't matter if you kinda of go like this with it or you can just take your thumb like this. I find it to be a little bit easier just kinda of clamping down just like that. I'm gonna take my other hand and I'm going to place it right on the bottom, pretty much from the ball of the foot right here all the way up to the tip of the toe. And I'm going to go into dorsiflexion. So I'm clamping down with this and then I'm pressing upwards with my hand right here to cause a very deep stretch into that second knuckle of the big toe. Press up as much as you can. You might get a sudden pop with this one. If you don't, you want to focus on not trying to force it open, but just get a very good stretch, 
Hold this one for five to 10 seconds. You're just going to relax and then you're going to do this up to five times. Again, with each repetition, try to stretch into it just a little bit more. From there, we're going to focus on the metatarsal right here, that long bone of the foot. How we're gonna find this, we're going to palpate again, or just kind of press into that second knuckle joint, and we're going to feel just below that. If you go to the top of the foot and start to press down, you're going to notice that there's a very long bone right here. That's that first metatarsal right here. So they tend to either get raised or come up, or they tend to drop so they can cause pain on the top of the foot and they can also cause a lot of pain into the arch right here and also across the bottom of the foot leading to big toe pain. So let's start with a dropped metatarsal mobilization. I'm gonna take my hands right here and just place them overlap like this on the top of the foot for a stable anchor point. I'm gonna take my two thumbs right here and I'm going to press into that second knuckle joint, let's feel again, and go right below that. From there, you can kind of press down and feel that long bone. We're gonna start right at the top of that first metatarsal, right into the head of the metatarsal. I'm going to press down right here with my thumbs. And I'm gonna keep pressing in there until I feel a very deep stretch right here. If this is dropped, you might feel like a big clunk, that metatarsal kind of resetting back into place. But I just try to hold this for about five seconds. From there, I just relax and then I throw in another repetition, driving in just a little bit further. From there, I'm going to go just a little bit down and I'm going to repeat this whole process pretty much tracing all the way down to the bottom of that metatarsal. If one spot just feels like it's really tight and achy, you can throw some more repetitions in at that point and just really focus on trying to um, increase mobility into that metatarsal. So focus on areas that you feel need a little bit more attention. The second part, I'm going to focus on driving that metatarsal downwards if we have one coming up. So I'm gonna take one hand and I'm going to cup off to the side of the foot just like here, right here. And then I'm gonna take the meaty portion of my palm and I'm gonna place it right over the top of that metatarsal. So let's palpate right here, find our contact point. I'm gonna take the meaty portion of the hand right here, place it right over that toe. The movement is very easy. I'm gonna clamp down with my uh, hands from my fingers right here, and I'm going to press downwards right here with that midi portion. This should feel like you have a very good stable anchor point and you can just really press in there and cause some good motion. This one right here generally will help um, give me a very good self crack into my foot because I tend to get raised metatarsals even more so after things like hiking or running. But I do the same thing. I press in there, hold it for about five seconds, throw in another repetition, and then I just move down and trace that whole metatarsal. And if any spot feels like it needs more attention, like let's say right here for me, I just throw a little bit more in there. Always target, again, the spots that need it the most. But go through all of those motions and afterwards do it before and after. See how the toe is feeling. Hopefully it's moving a lot better and that just gave you a ton of pain relief. Without a doubt, if we want to get rid of big toe pain for good, we have to strengthen everything into our toes, our foot, ankle, and calf. This exercise can do all of that. It's known as a towel scrunch. I'm going to be using a medium sized hand drying towel. Just lay it flat. The position of our foot, I'm going to keep my heel off of the towel and press down very slightly. From there, I can just rest the rest of my foot over that towel. The first movement, I'm going to try to flare my toes out like this, even more so this big toe. Try to drive this big toe out as much as you can from the toe next to it. You should feel a very good activation across the big toe right through here. Then I'm going to take my toes, I'm going to curl them forward and then grip that towel and then pinch the towel right in between the big toe and the toe next to it. So kind of like right at that gap right there. And then I'm going to lift up while pressing down with my heel. The more that we bring our foot back towards us like this in a dorsiflexion, the more activation that you're going to feel on the bottom of the foot, including the arch right here. So really focus on feeling that. You'll also feel it around the ankle into the calf. Once we hit all of that, let's hold this right here for about five seconds. From there, you can relax, take a breather, and then you're just going to repeat. On the next repetition, try to drive those toes out even more, grip down, and then lift up as much as you can. You want to do this nice and slowly for about 10 to 15 repetitions. With each repetition, challenge yourself just a little bit more to help build up those muscles. Afterwards, you can take a breather, and if you feel like you need a little bit more, throw another set or two in there. It only helps just build those muscles up, and I hope that this right here will get rid of that big toe pain for good. 
An important last step is to ice everything after doing these exercises to eliminate any irritation or inflammation. The easiest way to do this is with a homemade ice massager. I took a water bottle, poured a little bit of water out of it, and then froze it. That way I can roll this on the floor over the bottom of my foot. It usually feels pretty good. I just apply enough pressure in there to get a nice self massage and the ice is going to take care of the rest. I try to do this nice and slowly for about three to five minutes until everything just feels like it's nice and numbed out. From there, I just switch to the top of the foot by rolling it over my toes just like this. You can position the water bottle over any spot that you might feel is a little bit more warm or irritated, but just try to hold the spot for about three to five minutes until it's numbed out and then you can just switch over different spots. If you want to attack more towards the inside of the foot, even more so if you have a bunion, just position the water bottle like this and then press the foot inwards in for about three to five minutes until it is numbed out. Just a good way to control any irritation or inflammation inflammation after the exercises. If the exercises helped, please support the channel by giving this video a like and maybe subscribing too. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them below. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks for watching.